Hey guys, we are back again with our next podcast and uh, as you know we are focusing on this series of crash course. So today we'll be talking about Pascal's wager. I have my co-host Jacob with me and he will be helping us to know more about the Pascal's argument and uh, what it is about. You give me life that I can't take credit for. Call me to walk through an open door. Mr. Colton Dixon. Yeah, it's great to be back and this is, uh, this is our second last podcast for the year. Um, so, 2019 is coming to a close. Well, don't worry listeners because we'll be back next year with the boom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are also looking into uh, more opportunities. We'll be having a guest joining us all the way from Ireland. Um, I'll be keep, I'll be, we'll be posting the details on our uh, social media platforms on Instagram and Facebook so you can keep tap of it. So, that would be our first podcast of 2020. So, exciting year for us. We hope in the Lord to make it a blessing for all our viewers, our listeners and for all the people who are coming on our podcast and for ourselves in total. If you want to know who the guest is, well it's a surprise, so you gotta wait till 2020. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and we'll be posting details on it on Instagram and our Facebook yes. pages, so it's easy, it's there in the description. Okay, so this topic on Pascal's wager. For once I feel myself, you know, agreeing to, um, it seemed like for the initial part that I seem to be agreeing with most of what Crash Course said. and. Um, what Hank said in the videos, but as always, he you know he did his trademark thing and uh, misrepresented the positions, took very uh, blatantly blatant lies to argue against theism. But we'll be addressing that later on. But Pascal's wager is to get to get the ball rolling. Pascal's wager is a pragmatic approach. So it means that you concentrate more on the practical applicability of the claim or the belief more than the veracity of the claim. So, Crash Course Hank, he gives a very good example. He says that, you know, Popeye, the, the sailor, yeah. he eats spinach. So, he was saying that if your parents tell you that eating your spinach would give you strong muscles, well, the kids would decide to eat spinach. Mm-hmm. But it may not give you strong muscles. It may not. It may help you have some more proteins or more vitamins and may help you immunity. But if saying that to the kids is going to make them eat more spinach, well, why don't we say that? Even if it's false. So, pragmatism basically, like I said, Concentrates, concentrates more on the practical uh, validity of the claim and its applicability than more than uh, on the veracity or the truthfulness of the claim. So, Pascal's wager. Uh, Piyush, what do you know about Blaise Pascal? Being, a, Blaise being Pascal, a student of science, you ought to know about Blaise Pascal. Yeah, so Blaise Pascal, he was a very famous scientist and he has great contribution to the laws of pressure. Well, you must have heard of the unit Pascal, right? So that Pascal, PA, it stands for Blaise oh, Pascal okay. because he uh-huh. contributed in pressure and the unit of pressure, DSI unit is Pascal. Okay, so yeah, that, that was that was new for me about the unit of pressure. I have known him more as a scientist but I have known, I haven't known him that he contributed to the unit of pressure. Yeah. Thank you Piyush. Welcome. Uh, finally, finally uh, artificial intelligence student has contributed <laughs> from his aspect. So this is what the Pascal's wager is all about and this is the premise. Pascal assumed that there is a 50-50 chance for believing in God and for not believing God. So he reasoned that, and this was his position, he did not give much into natural theology or uh, philosophical reasoning uh, and philosophical arguments for God. On the other hand, he, he was enthusiastic about the arguments for resurrection from Christ as such. So what he believed was that you can't get to God with pure reason. Maybe there's a point in life where you go like, Oh, there isn't enough evidence for me to believe in God. At the same time, you feel like, oh, there is, there isn't anti-evidence, or there isn't evidence to disavow the existence of God. So, in that situation where you have a 50-50 chance of believing in the existence of God and the non-existence of God, the Pascal wager comes into play. So, what matters now is you can't make a call on whether God exists or not. What you can make a call on is whether you believe in His existence or you not believe in His existence. And Pascal said that belief in God's existence is going to give you a, a better payoff. So, uh, I would in, I will explain this with Dr. William Linkray's payoff matrix. Oh, so what is this payoff matrix? So, payoff matrix it is actually uh, it's actually quite used in uh, economics. John Nash, one of the Nobel laureate, and his contribution was this what is known as the Nash equilibrium or game theory specifically. So, he used this example of different outcomes. For example, let's say P use. Uh, runs a company and I run a company. So P, there are two outcomes for Piyush. Either Piyush advertises or Piyush doesn't advertise. 
and I am another company, so I can choose to advertise my product or I can choose not advertise my product. So if we both advertise, then there is a particular outcome for us. Let's say our in, our income is going to go up, or my income goes up and PU's income goes down. And if PU's advertising and I don't advertise, there is another set of outcome. And so in in four different situations, there are four sets of outcome. So John Nash tried to show that companies perform according to this equilibrium position, which is best for them, which is the best strategy to approach. And he created this pay of matrix ideology. And William Lane Craig, he uses this pay of matrix and he shows that there are four sets of outcomes. Now amongst the four, two of the columns, whether God exists or whether God does not exist, is not within our reach. It is beyond us. So there is nothing that, like Pascal said, there is nothing that we can do about it. So what we can do is whether I believe in him or not believe in him. If God exists and if I choose to believe in him, then Dr. Craig shows that we have an infinite gain, which is eternity with him, and we have a finite loss. That is, I forego the pleasures of sin and those things that my religion would ask me to abstain from. If God doesn't exist and I choose to believe in him, then I there is no afterlife, there is no infinity to gain, but I will have a finite loss because keeping in line with, with my religion, I might have abstained from immorality, adultery, uh, drunkenness, all those such things. Now, there is, now, if God doesn't exist and if I choose not to believe in him, um, then what happens is that I won't be holding on to those religious constructs, I won't be holding on to that moral code. So I will have a finite gain, but I won't be having any infinite loss or infinite gain because there is no God. True. Now if God does exist and I choose not to believe in him, then I have an infinite loss because I will not be spending my eternity with God and I will only have a finite gain. So Dr. Craig's matrix uh, answers Crash Course objection that pass about Pascal's math. Um, what they said is that, well, you're not actually missing out on nothing. You're actually missing out on some things. And he said that <clears throat> some of the things that you might miss out on uh, are things like um, maybe a, a, a coveted lifestyle or a hardcore metal uh, rock star lifestyle. So you will be missing out on something. You'll be missing out on sleeping late into Sunday morning. So there are certain things that you will miss out. Yes, you will actually miss out on certain things. But when you try with the proportion of what you are going to gain post your life, what you're going to gain with belief in God of infinite gain outweighs those finite gains. I think one interesting point is that the finite gains that we ought to get are temporal and they are finite in essence. But the gains that one can achieve with his belief in God is infinite, is, is what God is presenting to him. So it is way better than what humans can conjure up in this world. And, and one critical point is that Crash Course Hank says that um, some of the things that he 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 could have used any other example, but he chose three example, and one of that is a coveting, coveting coveting stuff. So coveting means to you know desire, aspire for what that which is not yours. Um, it can lead to envy, jealousy. Okay. Coveting. Okay, I'll go from there. <coughs> so one critical point is that. Is your ass comfortable? <laughs> So one critical point is that um, Hang uses this example, Crash Course uses the example of coveting and this says no coveting means to desire that which is not yours or to desire that which is not only yours but is, of, is owned by someone else. Um, is that truly uh, an attribute or an, an attitude to be weighed alongside the infinite gains of eternity with God? I mean, is that what Crash Course think our life is all about, about going after the pleasure of coveting others? Mm -hmm. Because coveting can give way to en envy and jealousy and that's what most people go out when they go to steal. They don't steal yes. because because of uh, a mere pleasure out of it. They want, they are driven by that nature, that desire to covet and that's how they go and steal. That's how they go and murder. So I don't see why, how that's sort of a good example in any case. And he says that we might miss out on, quote, living a, a heavy metal rock star lifestyle. Um, I don't know what they meant by that, uh, how it can be brought into comparison with it. But anyway, for the sake of the podcast, I'm not going to digress into, into the unknown. Now, next up, Crash Course says that maybe Pascal uh, Pascal believed that, you know, the pragmatism of, uh, of believing in God is that there are certain beliefs that can bring about it. And one of, those, one of the benefits of those beliefs might be the security of feeling that the word is ordered and meaningful. But that is not how you go to a faith or to a belief in God. You know, a belief in God does not bring about a vision of orderness or meaning to the universe. 
As we've seen in our previous podcast, it is the very essence that we see a purpose in the universe, a design in the universe, a order in the universe that helps us to see that there has to be a mind behind the universe, that there has to be a, a governing law behind the universe that is beyond humans as such. This assumption, this understanding of the universe to be orderly and meaningful is at the very core of what is known as the scientific hypothesis. The scientific hypothesis is what underwrites all the other hypotheses that there is. So, as you know, the term hypothesis is brought up when people uh, hypothesize what are the different situations or how theories work out. The, the core scientific hypothesis and understanding of science, that sh- the first premise is that the universe is ordered and understandable. And connecting to this first premise is the second premise which shows that it is good for us to understand the universe. Now, there are three premises, but we, it's not necessary for us to go into the scientific hypothesis. But the first premise that the universe is ordered and the second premise that it is good for us to understand the universe. It is, it is what girds together the entire science as well. Uh, because Albert Einstein said that the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. Now let me show an example about what we mean by you know, the orderness of the universe and how it is something that we cannot forego. Okay, you don't have to be a scientist to understand the orderness of the universe. For example, I am rec- recounting an example of what happened to me, to Piyush, okay? Mm-hmm. So I was cooking and I poured in you oil. Cook? Of course I cook. What do you mean when you cook? <laughs> oh, come on, that's so sexist, man. I cook. I, what, what do you mean by that? Okay. So, okay, this is an example, but still I cook. Yeah. Okay. So imagine you're telling a story and they're saying to a friend, hey, I was cooking and uh, I was putting all the firewood and I you poured. You cook on firewood? Uh, boy, this guy. <laughs> Dude, I was using an example. It's an example. Let help me bring okay, out the analogy. Okay. Okay. So, okay, not me. Someone else was cooking using firewood. Out, they were going for camping. Okay. Is, okay. Does that satisfy you? Yeah. Okay. They were going for camping. They used firewood and they had to put in oil, and they poured in oil and they uh, lit the firewood on fire. Does, does anything of it sound? Uh, what do I say? Uh, abnormal to you? No. No. That's how it should work, right? And let's say he wanted more fire to come, so he poured some more of the oil. But suddenly the fire stopped. So what do you think, what is it that he might have poured in? Water. But why couldn't it have been that he poured in oil? Oil obviously it inflames the fire. Yeah, so... But then in this case, the fire is going off. Uh, so that means And the it, most obvious answer would be water. Why is it that every time we pour oil into fire, the fire goes on? And why is it that every time we pour water into fire, the fire goes off? So that is a very basic example that shows that there is an order in the universe. You don't have mm. to be a theist or you don't have to be an atheist to understand that principle that the laws yes. of physics are holding on together, yes. irrespective of your metaphysical understanding. So um, I don't think if I don't think overall I don't hold that maybe Blaise Pascal himself said it, or even if Blaise Pascal might have believed that you know you can only reach that conclusion only if you hold on to God. I would say that is very erroneous as we have right now show, displayed cells. One question which arises in my mind is like, uh, you must have heard of Christopher Hitchens, right? Yeah, obviously. He was an old atheist. He, so, he passed away yeah. a couple of years back. So he said that uh, having faith in God, it is our choice. Right? Now then, uh, why is it that uh, God doesn't intervene because we are being selfish and we are being stubborn, unbelieving on what we want? Mm-hmm. So it's sort of like, um, like I want to get into heaven, yeah. it is good for me, so I'm going to force myself into believing mm-hmm. in it, not because of the of the merit of believing in God, but because of the gains. Yeah. So why is it this way? Well, the thing is that God won't be tricked by that attitude. I mean, the, the fundamental understanding of the God that we hold on to is omniscient. And also he is omnibenevolent. So he's a God of justice, righteousness, honor, and also he's a God who knows everything. So the Christian God does not entertain the possibility of someone sneaking into into heaven. Uh, for example, in the Pilgrim's Progress, the amazing book by John Bunyan, the classic, uh, there is a scene where uh, the pilgrim is traveling and he sees certain people trying to enter the, uh, the, the celestial city by tra- trying to climb over the walls. And the companion with pilgrim says that they will be pushed out, they will be kicked out because you have to enter through the narrow gate. You can't sneak your way in. So it's, it's clear that God won't be tricked um, uh, with, with one trying to push himself into with uh, sort of like brainwashing his ideology and brainwashing his mind into forcing him to believing in the God. Because the, the core of the Christian faith is that you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and then you will be saved. So it is a very clear matter of the heart. 
you cannot force it upon yourself crash course uses the idea that that they sort of uh, like straw man blaze fastkill by saying that you have to brainwash yourself into believing in god but that is that is not where uh, that's not, that is not the position of blaze fastkill what pascal believed is that if you come to a place where you are not able to make um and a stance based on evidence or reason as such what you can do is you can engage with the christian community you can attend church uh, be with the community be enjoy some fellowship and then these habits will start growing in you and you will be able to see what it truly is so your eyes would be open because yeah. you are you are you are hindered from accessing with reason yes. so let's think the let, let it be a practice for you try it out go to church attend the community um be with the people enjoy some fellowship attend some prayers so he was he knew the beauty of the christian faith as all christians well, that's see that's the reason that i am a christian today exactly yeah. Yeah. because we we see the beauty of the christian faith and like peter said we stay together because of that beauty of the christian faith there is a point that reason and intellectual and apologetics re- brings us to but from there on it is a conviction of the heart that you choose to believe in christ that you choose to place your active trust based on active evidence in god true so blaise pascal i understand that he held on to it because he knew that once a person engages with the community and with god and with prayer he will see the beauty of the christ so a person who is hindered by own his own intellectual deficiency or he may be he not be able to understand it he, not, he may not be able well versed in it or if he is even if he is stubborn in his heart that i don't want to believe in god even if that person comes to a point and tries to engage with god god would draw closer to him because in acts 17 we read that god is nearer to those who seek him so those who actively seek god will not miss out on god so even you watched this crash course video right yeah so what was your take from it so my take uh, on the pascus wager is that i don't see this as an argument for god and hank is also right in noticing that this is not an argument for god it more or less i would say it more or less deals with the epistemology of god as to how we know it than on the ontology of god as to whether god exists as such so like i said this is not an argument for god what what i would do with pascal wager is that i would use this as sort of uh, a thought provoking incident okay so i would when i engage in a conversation with a person who is agnostic uh, specifically an agnostic in this case an agnostic or an atheist or an apatheist i would say to him well see these are the outcomes that you are looking at it's it's infinite gain with some finite loss or it's infinite loss with finite gain so if god exists then you're better off with believing in him so why don't you analyze the arguments for god why don't you analyze the evidence for god why don't you analyze what we have presented more in depth maybe you may not have seen evidence enough yet but don't get down to draw a conclusion because if god exists then that is the most cataclysmic event of your life because your life is going to turn upside down it is going to reach out into far eternity so don't take it as a silly aspect that you not you can't be bothered with it or you are going to brush it aside saying i don't have enough evidence consider it more clearly so this would be a thought provoking or a foot for thought question or a statement that i can let go of the person with and one point to clarify is that the when pascal presented his wager he was more oriented towards christian part of the wager because he contrasts it at christian to atheism because there is an obvious question right you're saying god 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 mm-hmm. what if it's allah yeah. what if it's it's the hindu gods there's not only a single religion. yeah there are hun- there hundreds are many thousands religions. of god yeah. thousands millions of god mm-hmm. so what if you end up uh, not being an atheist but you end up believing in the wrong god yeah the reason with the base class is that like i said he saw other evidence from christianity and he was un- he was convinced that the evidence for christianity far outweighs the evidence from other faiths so that's how he narrowed it so my responsibility if i am going to apply blaise pascal's uh, the pascal's wager would be i can narrow down the oppositions of naturalism okay the opposition of atheism of the other religions and narrow it down and see amongst all the other major world religions the those that which contradict themselves um amongst those religions which one holds more truth to itself or which one is which one has more evidence going for it and then i can draw a conclusion so like i said the pascal's wager uh, it is not an argument it is not full proof it is uh, it is best put it is a thought provoking incident yeah so uh, so that is that is where i would i would uh, finish it off and actually his uh, the pascal wager was actually part of um, a greater work of blaise pascal in presenting the apologies for faith but uh, his untimely death uh, cut it short his work so that that is i would say uh, an unquantifiable loss for the field of apologetics yeah true and we would have stopped our podcast here but unfortunately crash course did not stop it there for some reason for some reason they had to go and talk about uh, 
Burton Russell's the late atheist analogy of a flying teapot in space and the example was that you know there is a flying teapot in space and there are certain people who believe that the teapot exists so they build churches they believe the teapot they did services they pray to the teapot and anti or a teapotist people similarly atheist a teapotist teapotist came and said well there is no teapot outside so the teapotist who believed in the teapot who prayed to the teapot said well so far no one has been able to disprove the existence of the teapot so we believe in it so he was sort of trying to ridicule um, faith as such as one being blind we had uh, discussed this previously in one of our early podcast where we said is faith blind is the biblical faith blind is faith of abraham blind see is the father of those who believe so we showed that faith in the biblical sense is not blind uh, faith even in the christian academic world is also not blind that's why we have hundreds of philosophers hundreds of scientists who are core christians and who are experts in their field so faith is not blind and is the belief in god falsifiable can you bring an evidence that falsifies god's existence of course you can if you can show that infinite regression is possible then you have disproved the cosmological argument yeah because it shows that you can you can keep on going for on and on and on and you don't need a creator for the universe that's that is a first cause unmoved creator if you can show that there that subjective morality is understandable and it is applicable and that we don't need that we don't need an objective transcendent immutable moral law or a moral cause then yes you have taken on another pillar of of the argument for god and most importantly if you can prove that the resurrection of jesus christ is not a rational and a plausible conclusion if you can show that there is in enough evidence that would lead to the resurrection that there is enough evidence that would single out the resurrection as the only explanatory conclusion that accounts for all the evidence then yes you have disproved christianity then and there if you have disproved christianity you have disproved one of the strongest pillars of theistic belief then the next step would be judaism and islam the two strong monotheistic beliefs so the belief in god is not uh, unfalsifiable in its essence it is falsifiable there are proofs that you can bring against and falsify it so the analogy of uh, the flying teapot or the flying spaghetti monster or the invisible gardener of uh, that anthony flew brought up there anthony flew uh, mentioned in one of his in in theology and falsification these are not things that is but that shows that the belief in god is unfalsifiable we have evidence that can be brought if you can that can be uh, fine tuned to show that god does not exist if there are any then yes yeah, so belief in god is falsifiable so basically like uh, we have such a huge amount of evidences about our faith that it outweighs uh, the small mm. parts which you know the crash course people they would take it up and try to disapprove our faith yeah like i said you know the belief in if i if i have made it clear enough belief yeah. in god is falsifiable like if you prove that resurrection is not the rational conclusion then you have disproven christianity it is clear mm-hmm. like paul says yeah. if christ did not rise from the dead we of all men are the most pitiable yes so theism christianity is falsifiable it is not a mere attachment to faith it is not fideism that you believe you know i believe what i want to believe you can disprove faith but we haven't got sound rational uh coherent arguments that account for all the evidence that account for all the arguments for theism that can be presented to disprove uh, faith in god or theism of christianity yet as you know that uh, this is the second last podcast of this year well uh, jacob what will be the last podcast of 2019 be it must be something special right yeah it is something quite special and it is going to shake some of our understanding of scripture and how we read and interpret scripture in this um, video of blaze pascal and pascal wager crash course at the end they say well if you're going to hold on to god by blind faith then you might go and do things that are um, unacceptable so he says that you might deny rights to certain people so he's referring to uh, the anti homosexual lifestyle view of christianity or you might go and kill people okay so the question that we'll be addressing in the next podcast is referring with the book of joshua is god a moral monster is he a bloodthirsty genocidal maniac who commanded the execution of hundreds of thousands of people in the land of canaan including wow. women and children is he that moral monster wow i just can't wait to hear more about it from you but then you have to wait for the next week yeah so thank you guys for listening to us and now we are signing off please like share and subscribe it's so confusing You're the passion that I never lose cuz I believe